Hey up, how are you doing? Welcome back to the Yorkshire Bike Mechanics YouTube channel. I hope you're all good and you're having a good week. And today, if you have a grumbling, noisy, uh, bearing rotten uh, Shimano E8000 e-bike motor, then this is the video for you. Now, I don't think this has been done before. I can't find a video of anybody, wanting, of anybody doing this before. But once you see, when I start this particular job, you'll understand why it is very tricky. It's not for everybody, and you do if you don't feel confident, competent, and if you don't feel competent about doing it, you best not even start it. Okay, and you'll understand that when we get when we get into it. Now, this will sort out your noisy bearings in this motor. It will not sort out your e fault numbers or any error messages that you're getting on your display this is not the video for doing that okay if you're getting error messages on your display then it's something completely different okay and you need to take it to your shimano dealer so the procedure <coughs> that we follow for shimano e-bike motors is that if there's a fault or it's noisy okay and we can't solve it here then what we do is we plug it into diagnostics send a copy of that to shimano they have a look at it and then they let us know what they want us to do now nine times out of ten they'll ask for that motor back okay now when it gets to shimano they will not open the motor they don't open the motor they don't overall motors at shimano they'll replace it uh, rather than try and repair it themselves and they'll send that back so that's the procedure now this is the sort of thing that you're probably wanting to leave to your bike mechanic to be honest uh, but nevertheless let's crack on so here's a shimano motor it's a 2019 e8000 okay it's not showing any any error messages but it is noisy the bearings are noisy and we know this because it makes the same noise whether we turn it off or we turn it on okay so we're going to change the bearings in this motor okay now how this motor is accessed basically is through these uh, T25 torques at this point okay at this side this is the only bit that we need to access really the only thing that we need to do at this side I've taken the plastic cover off by the way the only thing that we need to do with this side is to remove this circlip here okay and we need some circlip players for that so <clears throat> what we'll do is <clears throat> let's take that off first okay so we'll just lift that up and put that to one side now it's worth having a little pot or something just to put all your little bits and bats in so you don't lose them <clears throat> okay so you take your t25 torques these will be tight okay and you undo these one by one they are all the same length apart from this big one here that's the longest one okay apart from that they're all the same length so I'll just quickly undo these and I'll come back in a second okay so we've taken all these T25 torx bolts out okay so what we need to do now is basically is separate this half from that half okay now we need to do this with a hammer but with a plastic end on it okay and you just tap slowly round that edge okay and you'll hear it come loose okay once you can hear it start to come loose get a Stanley knife blade and we take a Stanley knife blade and we just create like a little gap and then we cut the silicon bead okay remember don't stick your knife in too far don't stick your blade in too far just to basically cut that silicon seal that's already in there okay now once we've once we've cut that okay we can go ahead and gently lift this top off now the thing to remember before you take this top off oh and i forgot to say you can obviously see that this motor is clean it's important that you clean this motor before you start this sorry i forgot to say so we're going to lift this case off but if you remember well you can see that this side has all the connections on it and they're actually fastened to this side of the case 
So you can imagine that when we lift this side off, there's obviously going to be some kind of uh, wiring that connects this to the other side of the case. So we need to be mindful of that when we take it off, okay? So let's just split it apart very carefully, okay? Very, very carefully. Just teasing each part off as it comes out. Not going too far. Okay. Being very careful. There we go. And we need to look inside just to see where those cables are going. I hope you can see that. There, it, there's one look, okay. I'll just focus in, okay. I'll put my pointer in there, okay. Can you see that ribbon? That ribbon fastened to the main board, okay. And there's two wires that uh, fasten the power connector as well. So we've got this section here, which is the control wires and the speed sensor wires, etc. Uh, that connects through the ribbon there. And then there's two big wires I can see at the other side. So what we need to do is before we take this case off, we just need to lift this connector. Now at this point, we need to be careful. I need to say that this is a very, very um, sensitive uh, electrical board, electrical circuit board. So you mustn't touch it if you can help it, okay? Particularly with anything. Don't go start and prodding stuff in there. Now these particular connectors come off fairly easy and they come off where the wires goes in the back, okay? So this is probably best done with your fingers if you've got small fingers. All you need to do is just get to call the ribbon at the back and just lift it up from the back and it'll come away from the board. Okay, like that. Okay, can you see? I'll just lift that up to show you. Okay, you can see that's actually come away from the board. So now we can see that these particular cables on the other side go into the board at the other side. So we can gently lift that off just like that and then we can fold them apart. Okay, I hope you can see. See if that's in focus, okay? So you can see now, we've got the control cables there which are off the board, which go there, which we can see. Okay, we can see the main shaft going through all the way. There's a bearing on this end, and there's a little shim, okay, just there. You need to keep that safe, and it's a wash, and it's a clean, and you need to keep that to one side, okay. There are other shims in there as well, which you need to be aware of, okay. So we'll put that in there. It's also ideal to, if you're doing this yourself, take photographs every so often so you know where you are with things, okay? So the next thing that we need to do is we've taken the circlip off the back. So this particular through axle should come all the way out, okay? So it should gently come all the way up if we're careful out of the housing he says okay and we'll take that out there as bearing there's as bearing on one side that we're going to replace okay so let's put that put that over there out of the way so you can see where that goes now if you look inside you can see some roller needle bearings Okay, I don't know whether you can see that. Just down inside where the main axle went through, okay? We're going to re be replacing those as well. Now, <clears throat> we don't really need to touch anything this side. We just need to be really mindful that these wires are connected uh, to this board. So we need to be, obviously, mind well, we need to take care of that. Uh, this particular board we don't need to remove, but this smaller one we do, and this particular... Uh, cage here, this nylon cage, uh, which keeps all the grease and everything uh, in one particular place. We need to obviously remove that as well. And this particular section we're going to remove. This is where the speed sensor is and the torque sensor is in this side. Now these two are the bearings that we need to, uh, sorry, the, 
these two gears are the ones that we need to take out next you can see the bearings on the end which we're going to replace but while I'm on, on this subject of shims and things like that you'll notice there's another shim right in the bottom of there okay can you see that so it's worth taking that out so you don't lose it okay and putting that to one side as well okay and again take photographs of where things go so next let's take these two gears out of here there we are okay so as you can see that's them two there okay that's bearing that we're going to replace that bearing we're going to replace that bearing we're going to replace and that bearing we're going to replace okay so we need to give these a wash as well now that's particularly dirty there as well uh don't uh looks quite dirty there so what we're going to do is we're going to clean all these as well so we'll put them to one side okay now that leaves us basically with this particular uh, nylon cage here okay uh, the speed sensor and the needle roller bearings inside there okay so that's the bit that we need to take next so again keep your hands clean okay okay and we take a screwdriver very carefully and we just loosen these bolts here okay so we take a screwdriver and we just take these screws out here very carefully taking care not to drop one in the bottom of the of this of the other side of the case okay now also what you do need to take care of as well is the um if you notice at the bottom of this shaft here there's a, another shim okay so you need to take that out and put that to one side again photograph it so you know which one goes where you need to take care not to touch this circuit board okay Okay, and there's one more screw there that, that uh, that'll come out there. Now this little cable here, this little uh, ribbon cable here, uh, we, sh we don't really need to take that off there. We can just find kind of fold this out of the way. It helps if you've got a magnet as well just to get them get them bolts okay so now that we've got out that loose okay we can just lift it out very carefully okay and we can just lift it over and just get that out of the way okay and we don't need to remove that ribbon okay I'll just rest that on there okay now that'll leave this section here um, now what we've got to do basically as we're going round here we need to check for wear and tear on certain things okay and we can see here that although it's pretty it's pretty uh, covered up with grease that there is some discoloration there we'll just give that a wipe off very carefully we can take that ring out okay lift that over okay now now that now that we've now that we've got this wheel out you can see some discoloration on this circuit board here I don't think it's damaged or anything but obviously there's just grease on there that uh, uh, it's not damaged it's just grease that's got round there okay so we need to lift this off there's a ribbon attached to the left hand side so we need, just need to put that out of the way just lift it off to one side being careful with that ribbon now you can see why while I'm doing this this isn't for the faint hearted 
it's not an easy thing to do okay and then that enables us to take all this lot out okay okay so that's that out of there as well okay so we're now at a stage now where we've taken all the components out of this motor that we need to be able to service and replace the bearings on okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to take these components we're going to wear and we're going to clean them okay we're going to inspect each one and see if there's any particular damage on them okay and then we're going to replace the bearings on them so what I'll do is I'll go away and clean them and then I'll come back but what I want to do before I go ahead and do that is just show you this one which I've noticed here okay it's quite a lot of rubbish uh, on this other side and this bearing don't feel particularly good so what I'm going to do is I'm going to obviously going to give it a clean and just make sure that it's not damaged in any way I don't think it is uh, but we need to just obviously double check it and give it a clean so I'll wash these components I'll leave that one because we don't want to be dipping that in any solution obviously because it's circuitry on it so I'll leave that one till last and I'll come back in a second so we're back again okay I've cleaned all the components give them a good cleaning and degrease okay so now what we need to do is we're going to take this away very carefully and we're going to lift it and we put it somewhere safe and then what we're going to do these are the components that we've taken out okay so what we're going to now go and do well I'm going to put my teeth in what, I'm, what we're going to do now is we're going to replace all these bearings on these individual components so what we need to do first of all let's take this particular component there's one bearing on this okay at the minute so we need to remove that bearing and put the new one on and we remove it with uh, a bearing puller uh, and for bearings like this we use this particular tool it's fairly easy to get hold of you can get them from Amazon but buy a quality one um, it, uh, it pays in the long run it'll last you for ages so what we need to do basically is get them fingers under there okay and I'll just quickly show you how this one's done and then you can uh, you can understand how the rest are done okay so we just unwind that slide them fingers under bearing like that tighten that up okay make sure it's all square and nice and neat and then we just basically pull on this particular bar here so we'll get a we'll get a spanner okay and we'll just gently turn that now I'd normally suspend this in a vise but I'm just doing it like this so you can actually see it so it's easy to see and you can see it actually lifting off the axle there so once we get it started we can do it fairly easy and that'll come off there without damaging anything else here we are now I'll go through where all these bearings come from so you know where to go for them okay that's that one off okay so that's fairly straightforward so what we need to do basically is a put a new one on there so we'll give it a clean nice and uh, it's nice and neat that there's no particular marks or grooves on there so that's that's fine that's in good nick okay so let's put us new bearing on there so here we go with his new one okay put a little bit of molly base lithium grease on there just to make sure it goes on all right Make sure it's nice and smooth. Okay, a little bit on the inside. We'll just drop that on there, okay? And then we can get a tool to put it on. So what we need basically is a bearing tool that's actually going to sit nice and neatly over there to uh, put pressure on the inner race so it goes on nice and even you don't want to put pressure on this outer race just the inner one okay and we use a bearing press to do this 
So that's nicely on there. That's that one on. We can put that to one side. Okay. So this is the component that we need to do next. Now you'll see that there's two bearings either side. But in the middle there's a sprag bearing, okay? And sprag means it's just a one-way bearing. It goes one way, but it won't go another way. And how you access that is then in that little circle up in there. But if you decide to grease in there, you shouldn't need to replace it. But if you decide to grease in there, be very careful because those little tiny roller needle bearings will fall out and you'll lose them. If it feels nice, don't touch it. If it feels nice and smooth, uh, don't touch it. So let's take this bearing off first. So again, we'll use this bearing puller and you can see that's now coming off there. Nice and easily. There it goes. Okay, that's that one. And we might as well put that one on when we've got the other one off. So again, these fingers won't go in there, so we'll have to use a different puller. And we can use this one. Okay, so that's that one done. Um, I've put a new bearing on one end and a new bearing on the other end. Inside there is a, a sprag bearing, but you should find it's alright. Okay, if not, then when you remove that bearing, the shaft slides out, okay, and then you can actually get to that sprag bearing inside to get some lube and some uh, molly grease in there as well. Uh, but you probably should find it'll be all right. So that's them two bearings done. So that leaves us with one component. Uh, and if you remember, this is the, the part that the, uh, the main shaft goes through the through shaft uh, and what we need to do is we need to replace this needle bearing on the inside now these just slide out just like that okay and the new one okay get out of the packet a little bit of grease Okay, the one that I've taken out didn't feel too bad. But we might as well just replace the whole lot because we've got the kit anyway. So that just slides in there very, very gently. Okay, and a little bit of grease on the inside, taking care not to actually touch them electrical circuits. You can see them little ribbons there. They're very easy to knock, so be very careful, okay? And this big sprag bearing here on the uh, on the side, don't need anything doing with it at all. That should be fine. There shouldn't be any, much wear on that at all. Okay, we just obviously need to put a bit of grease on there just to re-grease it up. Not too much, okay? Just to get a little bit of grease on there. Just to grease it back up. Okay. And then, okay, we're all done. Okay, so that means we've replaced the needle bearings in that. Uh, we've replaced all the bearings and we'll have to check the sprag bearing in that. Again, bearings in that. And then we've got this com last component here and we've got bearings in that as well. So, We've now changed the whole lot of bearings in this particular uh, Shimano motor, which leaves us to put it all back together. So let's go get his case. So here's his case back again. Now all we need to do with this basically is just clean out the dirty grease, if you like. Just the bits that discoloured. Okay, we don't need to do too much with this just be careful obviously you're not touching any any cabling or components okay and then what we need to do is we need to put some fresh grease on that bearing housing at the bottom okay and the first thing that we need to drop in is this particular component here Okay, so, okay, that'll be fine. Oh, 
Okay, we'll just drop that back in. Again, being careful not to touch any of the electrical components. There we are. Back in. Okay. Here we are. In. Brilliant. That's nicely in its housing. Okay. So the next bit that we need to put in is the torque sensor. Okay. If you remember which way it goes in, we've already greased it up. Okay. So we can just drop that in there. In that housing there okay so the next thing that we need to do is we need to pop this torque sensor ring back over there okay now if you, if you remember there's a, a, a ribbon there so we need to be very careful how we get that over there okay okay and then the next thing that we need to put back on is this particular nylon cage here. Okay, which we'll put back. Now if you remember, if you remember right down in the bottom of there were a shim. Okay, so we just need to give that a wipe, put some grease on it. Okay. And then drop that back down in the bottom again. Okay. And that's where that goes. If you remember rightly. That's it. Okay. And that goes in there. Okay. So now what we need to do. Like I said before. Is just drop this cage back over here. Okay very very carefully without damaging that ribbon just drop that back in there just clean that dirty grease off there that's so if we just drop them screws back in there just put a little tip is just to put a tiny little bit of grease on end of your screwdriver and that'll just hold the the screws on the end of your screwdriver while you just fasten them up okay you don't need to make them tight okay so this one goes in next but it needs to go in with this one because they both kind of go together that slides in there so you need to kind of put these in together it'll find its way they'll find the way in just gently tease them in see to be careful not to touch the components okay so we've just pressed those two gears in there uh, and the housings in the bottom and now in there put a little bit of grease on uh, on the motor wheel there okay now we need to just drop this the main shaft okay back in put a little bit of grease on it okay just a little bit down there okay and then that Drops down into there. Okay. We need to push it all the way down till it till it goes in. That's it. Okay. So now we've got our motor back together. So all that remains to do now, basically, is just clean these surfaces off. Okay on both sides very carefully and then we need to apply some gasket um, that's fairly straightforward to do nothing complicated about that and then we just need to be careful that when we get this lid back on 
that we attach this ribbon uh, back to the connector on the main board there carefully okay so I'll just get some cleaning stuff some uh, alcohol you only need to apply it on one side so we'll do it this to this side Now this is actually silicone uh, and it does resist oil. I'll just get under them in wires there. That's it. Make sure we've not missed anything. That's it. Okay. And then what we need to do very, very carefully is lift this case side back over there. Okay, but at the same time, we need to make sure that we get that ribbon on that, uh, on that board. So we'll just carefully lift that over. Okay, putting it part way on very, very carefully. taking care not to touch anything okay now we need to leave a little bit of room so we can actually get that that ribbon on there okay so there it is I can see it clearly so if I get a little tool so I can push that on there all right that's that on okay just make sure it's down which it is And then we need to get this case very carefully back on. There we are. Done. A little bit tricky, a little bit messy, but nevertheless, done. I'll just wipe that gasket off. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to get these screws back in. Okay, so the big one if you remember goes in the back I'll come back to you when I've put all these screws in so all that's left to do now is to leave that to dry and then we can cut it off with a knife but that's it one Shimano motor E8000 new bearings all round quiet as a mouse Okay, so brilliant. All we need to do now is get in the back in the bike. Jobs are good. Un. So if you fancy overhauling your E8000 motor, then that's how to do it. Um, it's quite a long, complex job. It's not easy to do and you need certain tools to do it. If you don't feel competent, then obviously either get someone else to do it for you or your, your bike shop, if they will do it. There's not that many bike shops will do it. Um, the other thing to mention, it's a little bit of a last resort thing is this, if your motor's out of warranty, if it's over two years old and it's making a racket and bearings are noisy, um, then if you want to buy a new motor it's going to cost you around about 900 quid. Uh, so it's worth doing if, you know, if your motor's noisy and it's out of warranty, it's a last uh, ditch attempt to, uh, to make it right before you have to buy a new one. Um, the bearings are fairly easy to get hold of, uh, we can stock them, we have them, if you need them then I can sell you a kit for Shimano, uh, I can sell a kit for Bros and also uh, Bosch, so yeah, that's how to do it, hope you enjoyed it, total pip!